Hello, I'm Penny Thornton and I'm talking astrology. On this video, I'm going to be talking about the full moon in Aries on the 17th of October, but I'm also going to be talking about everything else that's going on at the time, a kind of stretch of time really from about the 13th of October through to just before the end of the month. And you know, really since July, we have seen such powerful alignments and in tandem with that, we've had a lot of really, really important developments worldwide. And probably if you could talk to me right now, you'd be saying, oh, God, you should be in my life. So I think for all of us, it is a time that we're going through, living through that is unprecedented. We haven't lived through this Maybe we're learning a lot. I hope we're learning a lot, growing a lot. Um, but of course, that doesn't take away from it the fact that they're very challenging times. So this full moon is a super moon. It's the third super moon in a run of four. And it will loom large as you look at it. And depending you know, where it is in your part of the world, and as long as the skies are clear, it could be really, really impressive to look at. It's called a hunter's moon, and that's clearly because of the season in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Native American traditions, this is a big hunting season. And of course, it's just coming around the time of Thanksgiving in Canada, Thanksgiving to come in, uh, in America. And of course, all of us, by the time we get to the cusp of October through to November, we're already thinking of Christmas. So, this hunter's moon, an interesting one in terms of what we do at this time, but also in terms on this one, on this occasion, of its proximity to the Earth. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to mention uh, before we get into it. First thing I want to mention is uh, thank you all for subscribing. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And also thank you for all your comments. I go through all of them. Sometimes not immediately. It takes me a little while to get round to them. Um, and in fact, what, the reason I'm going to mention that this time is that um, there was, and there have been over, you know, the months, um, comments about different astrological perspectives, um, and especially really about the American election. I mean, every astrologer is making some kind of prediction about what they think is going to happen, who they think will win. Um, but what I want to say is, that, and it's, it's very interesting, astrology is both a science and an art. The science is, of course, we're looking at something that's, uh, that is scientifically there. Astronomically, we're looking at the planets in our solar system, if not some of the asteroids and everything else that go beyond it. And when we set up a chart, it is correct. I mean, where the planets are from the perspective of Earth, that's all scientific. Uh, but the art, of course, comes in. When you interpret it, you say what all those things mean. And like any artist looking at a scene or a person, They'll have different ways of interpreting it. Think of Picasso and then think of Michelangelo. I mean, do they inhabit the same universe? <laughs> Not really, but they may still be looking at the same scene. So that accounts for different interpretations. But there's an even bigger one in that uh, astrologers, uh, uh, like myself, uh, work with the Western system of astrology. So it's geocentrically based. It's based from the Earth and the Earth's perspective looking out at the planets, where if you're using the Eastern system and you're using, this is Vedic astrology, then the constellations, it's the astrology viewed against the background of the constellations. And of course, that means they're not operating in the same sign anymore. They're just about, oh, is it 27, 28 degrees behind in terms of the constellation. And this is why you may hear a Vedic astrologer perhaps talking about Donald Trump being a Taurus, uh, when in fact, of course, all of us in the West uh, know him to be a Gemini. So these are essential differences, and I think it's very healthy. Um, and really, I am going to be talking just a tiny, tiny little bit about uh, the election, probably only a minute or two, so don't get too 
caught up in it. Um, because one of the reasons I'm going to do that is this is the last full moon before the November the 5th elections. So it is rather crucial. And like all full moons, we're talking about closure and completion, tying things up, drawing a line in the sand. But we're also going to be uh, looking at the idea of bubbling situations or simmering situations coming right to the bubble. Um, and that's also going to play into what I'm going to be talking about shortly. Now, I am going to be doing it sign by sign. But first, I'm going to take you through the general view before I do that, which reminds me of the other thing that I want to talk about before I get into it. And that's if you really love these sun sign interpretations, you love to hear what's going on, then, you know, I do weekly audio sun sign by sun sign on my website, astralutely.com. So if you really do like to get a closer in view of what's happening week by week by week, may I suggest you head there. And of course, there are my written forecasts as well, and a host of other important things like big articles on the Saturn Neptune opposition and all sorts of things. It's, it's, it's massive. So if you love astrology and you want to know more and more and more, please head to astralutely. Com. So there we go. Let's head into this full moon. Now, as I said, um, this full moon is the last full moon before the American election. And I have set the chart from Washington, ironically, not for that reason, but because I always like to get a dramatic picture of the astrology in terms of uh, the symbolism that we look at in the circle of the horoscope. So I'm going to have a look at that now. And as you'll see, as we look at it, um, that the full moon, the sun opposing the moon, is right across the horizon. So in Washington and on the east coast of America, the moon will be setting at the time that it is full. And as you can see, by looking at this particular full moon, I've drawn some lines between Mars at the very top of the chart there and Pluto at the very bottom. Because yes, indeed, we have a really major configuration there. It's called a grand cross. And that is what's playing into the events and the experiences that we will have around this time of the full moon. So what is interesting about this uh, full moon, I want you to look at the degree there. It's 24 degrees, 36, 35, 36 of Libra, Aries. And um, it's always important if you've got something that that's going to directly connect to, it makes it very personal. It makes the effects of this full moon uh, really, really um, coming home to you. You you may feel it more, you may be more emotionally responsive to it, but it may also indicate that there is closure and completion and ending somewhere in your life, and it's a very personal experience. Now, as you'll see, I have also written in a few more things on the outside of this particular chart. You'll see that I've written Spica, 23 degrees Libra 50, uh, which of course is uh, very close to the degree of the full moon, close to the sun opposing the moon. And there at the opposite point where the moon is, we've got uh, Aries, um, uh, which is 24 degrees Aries of 39. And also when we look at that other red line I've drawn between Venus in the eight o'clock position and Uranus in the uh, two o'clock position, it's an opposition, Algol is almost exactly on the degree of that Uranus. So these, well, they're fixed stars, Spica and Algol, but Eris is a celestial dwarf and, or a planetary dwarf, and she is one of a handful that is sort of connected to our solar system but not considered to be a planet per se. So we've got Pluto, who recently joined the uh, clutch of planetary dwarfs, but we also have in there Haumea, 
and uh, well, Eris, I've just mentioned Eris, and Makamaka, which I talked about in my last video. And all of these planetary dwarfs, they have a common denominator in that they are all creator destroyer principles. I know that's a bit of a broad spread there, but in a in a way, when we think about fertility gods and goddesses and goddesses of the harvest and all of those kind of things, then we are looking at that creator destroyer principle. And Pluto, of course, is the one we know most about. And when we think about Pluto uh, stripping away uh, things that have done their time and in the uh, destruction of what has been the creative part of it comes into play and what we get is new growth and new things coming into play. So they are part of a, a, a great kind of cycle and in a way they have very good properties. But the thing is that the way they manifest in terms of interpretation is challenging. I don't know anyone to have had a Pluto transit and to have said, oh, it was pure joy from start to finish. No, it definitely wouldn't have been because we don't grow when everything is happy and easy, in harmony. No, everything is lovely. We'll sit back and uh, drink our margaritas in the sunshine. But of course, when something is taken away from us, when we are really stripped bare, then that's when our character comes into play. And that's when we have to dig deep for the resources in order to get through it. And it's a sort of common denominator with all of these uh, planetary dwarf planets. The other thing that I think I should say is that the uh, Hal Mayer, um, and uh, Aries and Makamaka were all discovered between 2004 and 2005. So they're very recent discoveries, really. We hardly had 10 years to really look at them. So they're still in the process of discovery. But as I come to tell you more about the interpretation of this full moon and its connection to Aries and uh, the other fixed stars, we do need to be thinking of what good comes out of darkness. That's the thing we need to be looking at. Now, also, when we look at that full moon, 24 degrees, uh, 35, 36 Aries Libra, if you've got anything in your natal chart at 24 degrees, it's going to pick it up. And in fact, I would make a greater sweep because once we take in Mars at 22 of Cancer, Pluto at 29 degrees, then I think we're looking at a whole decanate, a whole 10 degrees, really. And that means if you're born towards the end of your sign, that's the last decanate of a sign, then you're probably going to pick up all of this. It's going to be to loom large in terms of events and experiences in your life. And I did bother to just check, and you can make a note of this in your, um, in your little journal of astrology, and that is Israel's ascendant is 23 degrees 50, I think, from memory, uh, so that this full moon is right on that uh, ascendant, descendant axis. Putin's Mercury is uh, about 23, 24 of Libra. Uh, Trump's Venus-Saturn conjunction is 23, 25 of Cancer, so that this full moon is squaring it. And Kamala Harris's natal sun-moon opposition, she was born at full moon, is as near as, damn it, to this full moon. It's, um, you know, around about 27 degrees Aries Libra. So really in the mix here. And again, when we think this is the last full moon prior to the election, I think we can assume there are going to be some pretty dramatic events either just before this full moon or as we get to around the time or just after. Uh, will it have an effect on the election? I think it may well have a big effect on the e election. But I'm not prepared to go into what I think are the events surrounding that. I just think, as, as you know, if you care about these things and you're observing things, you know how divisive things have got with uh, an awful lot of uh, kind of dire sort of comments being made by both camps as to what will happen if Paris gets in or what will happen if Trump gets in. 
And of course, what it's doing, it's inciting violence. And uh, Mr. Trump has already had two attempts on his own life. Actually, there were three, but that one never got to, uh, you know, that was stopped in its planning stages. But it certainly wouldn't surprise me if we saw further attacks, uh, which, of course, would affect a lot of opinions and uh, the kind of way the election is going. And I, I think we must keep an open mind for all those things at this time, if only because it's not just a full moon. What we're looking at is a full moon uh, conjunct Aries, conjunct Spica on the other end. It's squaring Mars and Pluto. You know, it's it's a big configuration. So we are definitely looking at major, major global events. And coming back to thinking about um, Israel here, I'm actually recording this on the 29th of September. So um, what we've had already, we've had the assassination of uh, Nasrallah, the the leader of Hezbollah, and we are waiting at this point for the other shoe to drop, whether Iran will get involved or quite what the payback will be for all of this. Um, And it may take us really until nearer this full moon, and let's look at that Venus-Uranus opposition on Algol, Uranus on Algol, to see whether there really are any more dramatic kind of developments there. Also, I think while we're on the subject of Spica, Spica is one of the fortunate fixed stars, but Spica has a lot to do with honor, with achievement, with renown, with riches in some cases. And so it's it's always been considered a very, very good fixed star. If you're born with a fixed star on your ascendant or your midheaven, then uh, great good fortune is uh, bestowed upon you. Of course, there's a downside, as there always is with everything. And it kind of turns on itself if the negative aspect of Spica and there's injustice to um, uh, victims, to the, the, the innocent, injustice to the innocent. And we might think about this in the sense that um, it, with great power comes great responsibility and power corrupts, power corrupts astro- uh, absolutely. And so you might get in, in here a reason why certain uh Autocrats, people, countries, states go into what we might consider to be some kind of not very worthy behaviours. It's the underbelly of Spiker. But certainly I think there's a, a lot to be said here with that full moon on Israel's ascendant, descendant axis. It would suggest closure. It would suggest the end of something. Wouldn't it be wonderful if it was the end of all that, all the hostilities in the Middle East? We're always made aware of that potential, but given that Mars-Pluto opposition intersecting it, it seems to me that uh, it will be the reverse, and we are going to have some very, very unpleasant developments. Also, when I mention Putin's Mercury, which is also the focus for this full moon and therefore aspected by Mars and Pluto, we can also expect some pretty, pretty upsetting and powerful developments in Ukraine war, uh, that too. So I know this sounds sort of rather gloomy and doomy, and I will start to look a little bit more about what we can all do in order to embrace these influences and become you know, uh, really uh, empowered by them. I think that's what we want. We want to be empowered by the things that come at us, not uh, uh, kind of pressed and crushed under them. So let me have a look here and um, point out a few other things that are going on at the time. On the 9th of October, Jupiter, which is in the sort of just after one o'clock position, that's going to turn stationary retrograde. So it will have been full, fully in its retrograde stride by the time of this full moon. But often when we've got Jupiter involved, 
we've got grand events and it, there's a, something in a way very successful and very uh, advantageous about Jupiter, wherever it is in a horoscope. But at the same time, we do get that, that idea that things can get out of control as well. So that's also in the mix here with this very powerful grand cross. On the 12th of October, Pluto turns stationary direct. So there we've got a very, very powerful Pluto. As you can see in this chart, uh, Pluto is already direct because it's three days later. But of course, it is bringing all its properties to bear, revelations, bringing secrets to light, uh, very big power plays, whether we're looking at industry and governments and leaders or whether we're looking at wars and conflicts. Now, also on uh, the 12th of October, we've got a Mercury-Pluto square, and that means that there's a great deal of in-depth kind of discussion going on at this time. And in your own lives, you might find that even if you think something is going to be really easy to uh, discuss or easy to kind of move to, you know, get movement in a situation, it's going to be difficult because you'll be going back to the past. You'll be having to dig very, very deep. There are going to be some aspects of a situation that are going to be things you don't even want to have to look at. And I'm going to be talking a little bit more about that when I get to the end of this video. On the 17th of October, we have the full moon itself. Um, and actually, maybe I should go back to the 14th of October, which I think is almost more important. That's a Monday. The sun is exactly square Mars, while Venus is opposed to Uranus. And also on the day, the moon in Pisces conjoins Saturn. I think this is a very difficult period. And I think any kind of war situation is going to be at its, you know, there's going to be a lot of, of kind of... Uh, extremes and perhaps too we we see a lot of the downside of victory or the downside of uh you know one's ideas and what one is you know trying what one is fighting for if you like there is a sense of is it worth fighting for i think that's the question raised when we look at these influences when we get to the 22nd of October, the Sun-Pluto square is exact and uh, the Sun moves into Scorpio on the same day. And at the same time, Venus will be applying to Saturn. So we know there's a reckoning in here as well. And when we look at all these things in our own lives, it's good to know that this is going to be a tough period of the year. And <clears throat> it's one really when we have to be scrupulously honest with ourselves. And this is not a time to make excuses or to skim the surface or to ignore a red flag. We really need to be courageous. We need to face things that require our full attention and perhaps cause us to have to dig deep into our resources. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention here as well is the Mars-Pluto opposition. As you can see here in the chart, Mars is at 22, 23 degrees of Cancer, and Pluto is 29 degrees of Capricorn, almost coming to the end of Capricorn, where, of course, it, it, it has been effectively for uh, 12, 13 years now. It's going to move steadily forward once it enters Aquarius in November and we'll be returning to Capricorn for another 220, 30 years. So coming to the end of the cycle on its all important 29th degree, its degree of crisis, the anorectic degree, there's a lot at stake. But the Mars-Pluto opposition is important here. In my last two videos, I've talked about Mars, uh, I talked about Mars in Cancer. I explained how that works because Mars, of course, is, a cancer, is in Cancer at this point. And I also talked about 
embracing our Mars. You know, we all have Mars in our charts. We all have that function in our psyches and in our personalities. It's a human function, anger. I've talked about this. But it's important now to have a look a little bit deeper because we're bringing Pluto into the mix. And of course, as we look at everything else here, we're bringing those other planetary dwarfs and um, fixed stars into the mix as well. So the stakes are really, really high. And with Pluto, we have to go underground. We have to make that journey underground. And even if we're not doing it day after day after day, whenever we get a trigger from the astrology in our charts, maybe the sun passes that point, maybe Mercury passes that point, whatever it is, we're going to get an experience that forces us to think about this and to, you know, explore, as I'm coming to at the end, the idea of exploring the darkness within ourselves as much as we see the dark situations that are happening in front of our eyes in the world. But this Mars-Pluto opposition is going to be present for a very, very long time. Um, I don't actually want to have to read off all the times, but if we think loosely, it's between uh, about the 13th of October right through to, um, well, really almost the end of March <laughs> to mid-May. We, 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 we've got a sort of Mars-Pluto connection, and it will be stronger at some time than, than at others. So every time it's at its closest, and I will be giving you that instruction, in fact, Mars and Pluto are exactly opposed on the 3rd of November. That's just before the American election. I'm going to be talking perhaps a little bit more about how that represents a really important peak for all of us in our lives, some situation that is, is really something that demands a lot from us. Mars is about, you know, action. So it can be about sport. It can be about competitive situations, every bit as much as it can be about battles and being on a war footing. So Mars-Pluto oppositions give us the strength and the fight to conquer things, to be the winner, but also to deal with things that are really according to us, sort of superhuman as we look at them. So, um, right, where do I want to go from here? And I think we're getting a sort of double whammy here in that there's a lot of Mars around. There's a lot of reasons why we, we are aware of our own fighting spirit. Um, and we're also aware of conflicts around us or in the bigger picture, we're aware of them. I think having the full moon in Aries, and Aries is ruled by Mars, that's really emphasizing the need to find courage within ourselves and find that fire in the belly, I think I've, I've called it, because when we have that, we really get super strong. So we want to think of this full moon in Aries as empowering ourselves. Wherever your moon is natally, whatever the position is of this full moon in Aries, I think we want to think of that sense of empowerment, of rising to the challenge, of finding the courage to do what we must do. And I think that's the only thing we really need to remember that will guide us through this, per this period. This period isn't about love, peace, and uh, discussion, really. It, it isn't, whether it's in our own lives or what we're seeing out there. What it is, it's about courage. It, it's about fighting for what we believe in. It's about being able to pull something out of ourselves that demands a lot from each of us. So those are the things we need to be thinking about as we look at this full moon on the 17th of October. So I'm gonna take us through it sign by sign now, uh, but for those of you again new to my channel, um, I take it from the perspective of the sun sign, or if you know your rising sign, then from the rising sign. And to a certain extent, both are very interesting to look at because the sun, after all, is your solar self. It is such an important part of your being. 
it is our ego, it is uh, our, our self, really. And so the idea of being able to look at this full moon and everything else from the perspective of the solar self, I think has a real validity. But if you know your rising sign, then you're going to know exactly where this full moon is falling and all the other configurations around it. So you can always look at or listen to that as well. So I'm going to start off with Aries um, because the full moon is indeed in Aries. And one of the things I, I want to say, Aries, is that this full moon comes six months after the new moon in Aries, um, which was on the 12th of uh, April from memory, but it wasn't just a new moon, it was a total solar eclipse. So there is definitely going to be a resonance between events in the April period around the Easter time and their culmination now. And they'll be different from Aries to Aries, and nobody's got an identical experience here. But I think often the thing that sort of really does easily uh, trace this new moon, full moon cycle is if you started a relationship, for instance, you met somebody, and here we are now six months later, is this going to be uh, a committed relationship? Are you going to... Uh, commit to this person on a long-term basis? Or have you done six months and seen that it really doesn't have what it takes to be anything other than just a casual relationship? So, you know, you can often put a relationship into this six-month time span. But of course, any full moon is bringing well, it, it, it brings to the surface emotions. And when we feel something, we are empowered to act on it, aren't we? we if, if, you can, if you can put action and empower yourself with the emotion behind that action, you can be super successful with what you're trying to achieve. You need to harness the power of your emotions to achieve something. But of course, in there is a danger that if you allow emotions to overrun or overwhelm you, then the reverse happens and you will disenfranchise yourself. You're still working with the same principles. So we look at the sun moving through Libra, which it has done since uh, the 21st of uh, September. Uh, and this whole time relationships have been very important, whether you have met somebody new at this time, or you reached a very important decision about a relationship, and it can be a working relationship, your relationship with a company, or it can be, you know, a business partnership. It could be anything where you think that you're in partnership with people or someone. So this is like contract time. Are we ready to do the deal? Are we ready to review the contract and see what else we can do with it? Or are we ready to rip up the contract? And when we look at this full moon in the context of Mars opposition, Pluto, also, uh, you know, buying into this sun moon opposition, we can see that there are some very deep issues coming to the surface. So it may be history having a very important part of the decision making or the events that happened to you, there's a big history there. Or it may be something you didn't know anything about coming to the surface and realizing now everything looks different and you have a decision to make accordingly. Mars, as you know, is opposing Pluto, Mars being your ruling planet. From here, we're looking at the perspective of home on the one hand, career on the other. So it's almost as though everything is on a fine uh, it kind of, you know, it's such a tipping point, really. All these things pinning themselves on each other. So it is very important, Aries, that you don't do anything in a hurry, that you don't act on your feelings at the time. Recognize those feelings, feel them, acknowledge them. 
But before you take action, think strategically. With that, there's nothing you can't achieve. But if you do go full tilt on how you're feeling, you're going to burn bridges. You're going to end up making a situation worse. So don't do that. Step back and then take action in a measured way. And I don't want to leave you with the idea that there is nothing good about this particular setup. There can be something amazing. You could be suddenly, you know, catapulted into the spotlight. Um, there could be something wonderful happens to you by accident, although, of course, it's by design because it's part of destiny. Um, but even so, because of the setup of these four principles, it's going to be challenging as well. You're going to have to dig deep to really get through it and to come out on top of it. If we come to Taurus now, this full moon is taking place in your preceding sign. So it's in the 12th house of the horoscope. The sun is in the sixth house, Pluto in the ninth, Mars in the third. These are what I call the seeking houses. These are houses in which we seek understanding, we seek something, we're, we're looking for something. And it's also that they're taking place in the final sign of three in each quadrant. So there is a sense of tying things up, but in a way one is tying things up and going forward into the next cycle, but taking with you the valuable things or the things that are not yet done. So that's just a loose description of the effects of this full moon seen also in the context of that Mars-Pluto opposition squaring it. Now, technically, when we look at the moon in the 12th house and the sun in the 6th house, we might be thinking about health, the health of mind, body, and spirit. And what the full moon does is make us aware of what we need to be aware of. So if we've got an old injury that we've been putting up with, it's time to get something done about it. If we're worried about some aspect of our health, mental, dental, physical, we really need to get it seen to. It's no point hoping against hope. It'll just clear up. We need to confront what's going on in our bodies and our minds. And of course, this can stretch out much further. Maybe we need to look at our belief systems, what we think about things in the world. What are those opinions? What are those beliefs? Are we wrong? And that's a really important factor. Prejudice, all those things that have prejudiced our actions, are they right? So this is, can be a time of the spiritual expansion in the sense that your belief system is powerful and a guiding principle. And it's what you can rely on because it's going to make a sense of everything that you're going through. But at the same time, look at the friction that we've got here. Mars opposition, Pluto squaring the full moon. You must be very honest about your opinions influencing your decision making and you know how things go forward you need to be scrupulously honest about those opinions and belief systems and if they're coming up for question then they need to be questioned and acted upon we can look a little bit further at this because the sixth house is also where we seek to have purpose in life and often that purpose is the responsibilities and the duties we have to other people, which is why you get a lot of uh, people with a strong sixth house in the social services, in uh, health matters, in teaching and caring, uh, doing things that help others. And you may be called upon at this point to really help someone, or you may even be thinking to yourself, you know, what is my life purpose? And the answer is easy here. <laughs> it's sort of, it's about the responsibilities you have to other people. That's the life purpose here. And in finding it and doing it, then you're, you know, you're going to feel no longer questioning. 
It's also about learning and knowledge because Mars is in the area of learning, if you like, and uh, Pluto is in the area of knowledge. So they're, they're bringing these areas into play. So for some of you, there is a test of some description, whether that is literally an exam of some sort to see if you have what it takes to get a qualification or whether it's testing your knowledge and testing what you know. And this is also about consciousness. I mean, it is for everybody, really, not, not just for you, Taurus. The, the things that are happening at the time, we want to use them to expand our consciousness, not really to see them as the enemies of uh, our existence. So let's move on now to Gemini. And when we look at uh, you, Gemini, this uh, full moon is cutting across the uh, axis of collaboration and creativity. So it's at this point uh, we're looking at delivery. <laughs> no, I love that, don't you? When you think about procreation and you think about bringing a baby into the world after a gestation period, bringing something into being is quite literal. But of course, we can manifest all sorts of other things. And if we've been working on a project or whether we've been working with a team, there's some enterprise, there's some humanitarian uh, venture, it can be anything. But on this full moon, it's like it's done. Now, it could be completely done. So it's over and out and it's on to other things. But it may be also the end of a stage. And as I was talking to Aries about this, that the new moon in Aries is the beginning of this six month cycle. The full moon is the end of it. And that new moon in Aries in April was a total solar eclipse. So if something amazing happened to you or something, maybe you didn't like it very much, but it was significant happened to you in that, well, first, second uh, half of April, we can really cast our net much wider than that. Then this full moon relates to that. So um, you may think, well, yes, I met someone in this April period and here we are at the end of October and I've got to make a decision. Am I loving every minute of this relationship and I want to be with this person more and more or am I now beginning to see the cracks in this connection? And in that case, this full moon is saying, you know what, it may have run out of road now. But that idea of seeing the cracks in situation, that's what full moons do. They bring everything up to the surface and you can see where the cracks are. Now, sometimes those cracks are fixable and you can move on with everything strengthened, but sometimes they're not fixable. And so we can stretch that out into all sorts of other things where there are cracks. It could be your financial planning. It could be something to do with your work. I mean, it could be all sorts of things. But as long as we're working on that principle of the cracks showing, the question being, are they fixable or unfixable, then you're not going to go far wrong with understanding what this full moon is all about. But I do like this idea of the gestation period. Things have been preparing to come into being. They've been growing and developing. And hey, guess what? At this full moon, they're ready. And that might also be a very uh, powerful sense of understanding that you'll have at this time. But let's not forget that Mars-Pluto opposition is intersecting it, which means this is no easy peasy achievement. Now, the idea of giving birth uh, in the metaphorical figurative sense not necessarily the literal sense, is going to be a painful business. This isn't going to be easy. It's going to take a lot out of you. You're going to have to look deeply into the situation and into yourself so that as you bring forth whatever it is that is to be delivered, you've really done everything you can. You haven't left anything undone. Again, if you meet somebody or something is offered to you at this time, well, Gemini, it's going to change your life. And we can see that from the way 
this configuration is going to play out with this very, very powerful full moon. Cancer. Well, this is already one of the more important full moons of the year. Whenever you get a full moon flanking the angular houses, then it shows it's important. It's something you're going to notice. Now, in this case, the uh, angular houses involved are the fourth house of home, family, the foundations of the future, and the 10th house of career, life goals, the material world, your role in life. So you can see why it's important. And it's especially important if you're born towards the end of your sign, uh, which means somewhere between about the 13th of July through to the 20th of uh, July, 20th, 21st of July, then you're much more likely to feel the effects of this very powerful configuration. I usually say when I look at this, a full moon on its own, on this axis, I think it's about work-life balance. It's about getting things in balance. And all too often, we've got a lopsided situation. So we're either too much involved with the home and we're too much in our sanctuary, uh, in our privacy, and we need to be out there. We need to be connecting with the world. We need to be in the world, but it can be the opposite as well. You've been too much in the world. You've been out there doing, being, putting the building blocks of your future together. And what you've left out is the essential sense of home is where the heart is. Home is your sanctuary, your people. <laughs> you know, that's equally as important to your growth and success. So on its own, this full moon is about that balance. And it may be that you've got situations that show you that very, very clearly. It could be that it's the end of a job. You've reached retirement age, or maybe you knew about a job ending and a new one, you know, you're hoping to take up shortly. It can be just a marker on that. Same the other way around. You could be moving home. Your home conditions could be changing because. Maybe at this time, you're going to be an empty nester. Your kids, who've always been part of your home life, going off to university or wherever they may be going to. So this full moon is very emotional indeed. It's about, you know, what's, you know, what you're feeling you're losing or what you don't know how the future will be. Now, what you've known for so long isn't going to be there anymore. So that's the existential crisis we're looking at. And now we throw Mars and Pluto in here and we could be looking at something that happens, probably the action of another person or some other person's decision making that's going to affect you. So whether you're given something that you can see right from the outset, this is going to be uh, this is going to be a life-changing thing. I can see it and I'm embracing it and I'm really happy. Well, let's think about, you know, someone proposes marriage to you. That's, good. that's a life-changing event. What happens if you're going to have a baby? Wow, that's a life-changing event. What happens if you get promoted to a big position of responsibility? That's life-changing. But so too can other things be life-changing, a divorce, uh, we could have a big health problem, it could be a financial situation. Whatever the presenting facts are, looking at this Mars-Pluto opposition, remember Mars is in your sign, so you're the pro, a proactive person. You're the one who has to uh, sort the situation out, even if it's responding to someone else's action. It's your courage, it's your... Uh, ability to dig deep for your resources, find them and act with courage in this situation that has come up. And we do look at the full moon, obviously, on the day of the full moon, but be a little bit more flexible with this. As you can see, when we went through the first part of this video, I looked at a lot of other things going on, that Venus-Uranus opposition you know, a couple of days before the full moon, and that's pretty well 
a, a kind of shock surprise kind of influence. And that may be also playing into the story of this full moon for you. Leo, this full moon for you is taking place on the axis of communication. It's a really, really important axis. And because Mars and Pluto are intersecting it, what we've also got is this idea that there is a sense that something you've been searching for, whether it's an answer to something, whether it's some kind of decision you need to make, or it's a path you've been searching for, whatever it is, there is a sense that you're going to find it, uh, which of course is a very positive statement. These houses, uh, the third and the ninth, the 12th and the sixth, are what I call the seeking houses. And in the seeking houses, we're searching for something. We're searching for knowledge, we're searching for experience, we're searching for our life purpose, we're searching for meaning in our lives. Those are the four stations or the four houses neatly encapsulated. So the full moon itself is really on the axis of travel, communication, learning, the acquisition of information. It's about far horizons. It can be about international connections. It can be journeys of the literal and figurative kind. And it's almost as though you've come to the end of something. So maybe a journey is involved in discovering that you've come to the end of it, or maybe when you get to the end of your journey, there is a realization of something. A journey is involved here. And I think we, we sometimes get a little bit too loose with the idea of journeys. Everything can be a journey. I often talk myself about a book being a journey, uh, and, and it is. But somehow we've devalued that idea of a journey by using it so much. Um, but really, in this case, <laughs> It's so true, and it is applicable to what's going on in your life at this time. I think with the Mars-Pluto uh, square to that full moon, it does say that there is a certain amount of struggle involved here in realizing you're at the end of a journey, or there's a certain amount of struggle about a journey which leads to an ending of some description. So I think we can play around with those themes. If you're having a meeting around this time and certainly on the day of the full moon, it probably will be a bit of a heavy meeting. That doesn't mean it shouldn't go ahead or that you can't be successful, but it just means it's deep. It's not superficial, it's, it's, it's not easy. And the consequences are going to be profound. There is also a sense here, because the 6th and 12th houses are involved in that Mars-Pluto opposition, that it's the health of mind, body, and spirit that is part of the story. Um, now I've talked to a couple of the other signs about the idea of one's belief system coming into question, because our faith can move mountains. And when we have a strong faith, it helps us through situations like nothing else almost. But sometimes we have a, a crisis of faith because it isn't working for us or we've made a discovery or we feel our belief system is, and the things we've attributed to it are not working for us. The system isn't working. And that means we've lost our faith in it. Now that's how it's going to feel, but what it's asking for is a reappraisal. Maybe you don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There may be a lot that's still left in that belief system, that value system, whatever it may be, and it's getting the goods out of it, the things that are healthy. And of course, we can look at health as well, that maybe this is a bit of a health crisis for some of you. But of course, when we have a health crisis, it brings things to a head. And out of that comes good health. So 
I think it's very important to be alert and aware of any red flags, whether they're coming to you by the post, by email, you know, information reaching you and you think, oh, I don't like the look of that. I think I'll just leave it on one side right now. Or whether you've got red alerts going on with a tooth problem or some other kind of physical problem. This is not the time to say, oh, no, I just ignore that. Absolutely not. You have to look at what's going on and say, right, action. Remember, that's why we've got Mars and Pluto in there. It is about action. But it's not just about any old action. It's about strategic action. It's about getting things done right and having the courage and the uh, the, the courage really to do that, to you know, aim your arrows of desire purposefully, aim your questions, your the things that you're dealing with need to be aimed very clearly and very directly in order for you to get good results. One of the things I think that this whole complex of the full moon squaring the Mars-Pluto opposition is about being able to shift your opinion. It's about thinking, you know what, I've got to look at this in a different way. Whatever it is, a shift in your opinion is going to shift the situation. And I think this is what it's offering you. And maybe through some kind of emotional breakthrough or some overwhelming experience that's very emotional, what will come out of that is the realization, I've got to change. Not just things have got to change, I've got to change. If we come to Virgo, the full moon is on the second eighth axis. So we've got the sun in the second house, the moon in the eighth house. And I call this axis the axis of, uh, well, the financial axis, but also it's really the axis of self-worth. So it's not just about how much money you have in the bank, uh, what you own that's of value. It's about you yourself. Are you full of value? And that's probably the question that's going to come up at this time. It due to your response to the circumstances that you're meeting here. Is it that what you are facing is something that gives you that message? I am full of value. I feel empowered by what's going on at this particular time. Or is it the other way around and you feel disenfranchised by what's going on, what people are seemingly thinking about you, what people are prepared to pay you, what people are prepared to say about you. These are things that are in the front line of this experience. Now, the Mars-Pluto opposition is on this 11th, 5th axis. So the way this may come at you is through a friend or through a team project or even through your own offspring. So it may be that you are being judged by someone or a group of people and you feel maybe your value is in question. Of course, you should know that your value is not in question in terms of you yourself, because when you examine all the things that you are capable of, all the things that you give out, the offerings you give, you know that you are full of value. And that's what you need to do in this circumstance is to know that fundamentally about yourself. That makes you strong, even if other people are treating you in a way that makes you feel less valued by them. It's your value in yourself. And I have to say, if by going deeply into this, remember that Mars-Pluto opposition is encouraging us to dig deep, to go into our darkness and find a great truth, maybe that process, you will feel once you've made it, you know, I, I could be doing this, I could have done that, that there are some things here that I could do better or I need to affirm more. So that full moon is enabling you to see these things. And from that, 
they, it will incur, you know, a breakthrough of some description. This combination of a full moon and the Mars-Pluto square is taking place in what I call the survival houses of the horoscope. This is what we need to survive. Hence the idea, if we don't have money, how do we survive? If we aren't loved, if we aren't connecting with people, if we are alone, if we, you know, it, it, we need to connect to survive. There are all sorts of ways of looking at what we need to survive, and they will be sort of different from Virgo to Virgo, but you'll know what is essential to your survival. And it's this full moon and it's square to the Mars-Pluto opposition that is showing you what you need to survive and making it obvious what needs to be done or what needs to change, if you like, in order for you to be able to survive. So it may be a financial crunch. I mean, we, we, we may be looking at a situation where there are gathering debts and, you, you know, you, you, you can no longer cope with them all. So is the answer to go into receivership? Because let's face it, the eighth house is the house of receivership. It's where we receive from other people, but is also that whole idea of receivership. It may be, this may be the point at which you need to say, I can't cope anymore. I need to shed all of that, much as I don't want to, much as the it will incur a lot of damage even on its own. It's the right thing to do because I can't keep my head above water. But there can be any number of things that could give you that sense of pushes come to shove. And I absolutely have to save myself for my survival. And I mean, it does sound, you know, really tough, doesn't it? As though, you know, you're, you're on the edge of a precipice. I don't really mean to make it sound like that. Because sometimes we can find this whole issue of survival has to do with realizing who we love and what really matters. And that's like an epiphany that changes everything for us. We're no longer uncertain about something. We know what we need to survive. And that means clarity. So don't get all caught up with the idea that this is a real doom and gloom scenario. I'm just presenting all kinds of views of it so that, you know, there are a lot of you Virgos out there and you're not going to have an identical experience. But I think if we can get the collective feeling of this idea of uh, receivership, of uh, survival, um, survival in a relationship even, you know, all of those things, then I think you can take great meaning out of that because it is about the things you need to survive. And sometimes that means you need to really affirm your self-value. That, that can be an act to survival as well. Okay, Virgo. <clears throat> Libra. Well, for you, Libra, the sun is in your own sign. The moon is in your opposite sign. While Mars and Pluto are squaring it from the 10th and uh, fourth house position. So we're in the angular houses here. When we're in the angular houses, <clears throat> this is very dynamic. This is a kind of period of the year where you're not waiting in the wings. You are on stage in the center of everything. Things are happening around you that require your participation. They require your decision-making. They put you front forward. And sometimes Libra, because you are a thinker, you're an air sign and you consider all possibilities. This is why wrongly people assume Libra is an indecisive sign. It's not, you usually know what you like and what you want and what you think, but you just wanna make sure how it's received by everybody else. You wanna know that it can be the best. And also you wanna look at all possibilities before you come down hard on one. But that doesn't mean you don't know what you think or you don't know what you want. 
So this really is about being on the horns of a dilemma. Maybe the issue is about a relationship. Maybe you've got two people in your life. Maybe there's one you're in a, a full-blown relationship with, and this is somebody new. This is a relationship that's come in, and it's a very powerful relationship. So this is decision time. Has your existing relationship run out of road? Are you prepared to say, I'm leaving? Depends on the strength of your feeling for this other person. But there are other ways to look at this. Could it be that somebody, through actions that they take, really upsets the stability of your established relationship? Something's going on. It's the action of someone else or some company, some group is now impacting the harmony and the future of your established relationship. There is a sense of endings and beginnings always with a full moon. So this could be a time when you are ready to make a commitment. So you've already got the wedding plans all done. You're, you're about to take your vows. And that this full moon is all about getting married. But you know what? Because this full moon is squaring Mars and Pluto, this marriage, this relationship is going to change your life. This is not some, uh, you know, situation where it's just like any old relationship. It's much more than that. And the things that you will experience together, the things that this relationship will bring about are going to be life changing. Maybe you'll have to wait years before you discover this, but it's nonetheless true whether it happens next week, next year, or 10 years down the line. The reverse is the case as well, that you may have reached the end of a road with a relationship. And it's an event that does that. It's like, oh, that's the last straw. That can be the action of this particular setup with the full moon and the Mars-Pluto opposition. You needed something like this to say to you, you know, that's it. I will not, I can't go further. I can't go on anymore. Now let's stretch that out a bit, take it away from the idea of marriage and love and romance. And we just move it out there in terms of business, in terms of a business partnership or in terms of your relationship with a company? Is it an, a, at an end? Because in fact, it's quite destructive. The, you know, the work you're either being asked to do or the behavior of the people you're working with, you can't put up with anymore. And so you walk out. Could it be that? Yes, it could. But it could equally be that after a time of searching for a new position or even an upgrade to the position that you have, now it's offered to you. So that Mars in the 10th house is helping your ambitions. It's helping you to take on big contracts. It's, it's, it's changing you in terms of the work you do and the role you play. So there's a lot to consider here. And certainly around the time of this full moon, there could be all sorts of things that put you on a bit of a precipice. You know, what is the right action? Can I get through this? Do I have what it takes to achieve this? It's all good because you're going to come through it and say, I did it. I've made it. I rose to the occasion. So that's something you need to have in your mind. And if something doesn't come through or something collapses, that's part of a much bigger, if you like, plan, for want of a better word, that it was time for this to happen because you need this experience to change. Because let's face it, what does Pluto do for us? It changes us at core level. And so we need to accept when things happen that are challenging for us. Sometimes it's us who need to have to change. We need to reevaluate things. We need to you know, find new ways through 
So I think this full moon and its square to Mars and Pluto offers you a lot, Libra, but I'm not saying it's easy. And what I would say is, if you have to make a decision, if you have to do something that's asked of you, go deep into yourself because the answer lies deep within yourself. And when you contact that part of yourself, there is no sense you'll make a mistake because it's coming from that core, trusted, okay? Scorpio. Well, this uh, solar, I was gonna say solar eclipse, <laughs> I'm looking at the sun. The sun is in the 12th house of your solar chart, the moon in the sixth house of your solar chart. And it's being squared by Mars and Pluto. And that opposition is on the third house, ninth house axis. So it's all about seeking, learning, discovering, being. On the one hand, you could say that what's going on at the moment and at the time of this full moon is a masterclass in something. Basically, it's a masterclass in your ability to be the best you can be. That's what the masterclass is about. But of course, it's going to be presented in different ways to different Scorpios. For some of you, it's going to be about a relationship. For others, it's going to be about work. For others, it's finance. There can be a variety of reasons, but basically it's about you being the best of yourself. And there's a lot of power here. I mean, Pluto rules Scorpio. It's the reason you are an extreme person. You love passionately. You hate ferociously. If you're going to do something, you do it full out. You don't do nothing. You're also fire and ice. So that sometimes you're hot, 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 and sometimes you're ice cold. So this kind of setup we've got with this full moon and the Mars-Pluto opposition is going to bring out those extremes. You will either turn ice cold about a situation or you'll be so hot it's burning you up. Just be careful. It doesn't involve burning bridges, though. With the sun in the 12th house, and the sun has been moving through the 12th house for the past months, it will enter your sign on the, uh, you know, as, you know, just, just shortly after this full moon on the, on, the, on the 17th. So while the sun is in the 12th house, it has been a period when there's a recharging of the batteries going on. And ideally, and if you're listening to this, let's say on the 13th of October, for instance, there's still time to consider doing everything you can to reboot your system. Take a few early nights. Uh, don't push the envelope. You know, you need to replenish your physical, mental uh, and spiritual batteries. And by so doing, when the sun enters your own sign, 22nd of October, you'll be ready for everything. So don't push yourself. And especially at this time of the full moon, 17th of October, what you're probably going to be aware of is all the weak spots that you have. So if you've got a, an injury or an old injury, you're going to be super aware of it. If you're worried about your health, you've got a problem, but you want to not bother with it. You're going to think, oh, it's, 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 it'll pass. I'm not worried about it. But actually, on that full moon, if it's still a problem, you do need to check it out. You do need to make sure. Face your fears. I think this is one of the things, well, I'm going to be talking about this in my conclusion. That's what it's really all about. It's about facing your fears. And if there's one sign that has the courage to do that, it's yours. So we're also looking at systems, whether we're talking about the health system, whether we're talking about the structures and practices and habits that run your life. We're, we're all, you know, all of us have those because we don't have to think about them. We don't have to think about what we do when we get up in the morning. We don't have to think about this, that, and the other. That's part of our structure that makes the day go by. 
But sometimes we need to look at those structures and particularly we need to look at our belief systems, our opinions, because sometimes they are causing the very problem we are seeking to resolve. Our opinions about someone, our opinions about a situation, the spiritual values we have, the spiritual paradigms that we have. And if we, you know, we've got them all the time, we don't question them. But this is all about questioning those paradigms, questioning your opinions. Are they coloring a situation and you need to change your opinion? Is the belief system that you're following perhaps not serving you well? There are some things here that simply don't work or that you need to re-examine. You don't necessarily have to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, but there probably is something you need to re-examine by which you are living your life that is causing you the big problem in your life. And if all it takes is a shift in your thinking, if all it takes is to re-examine your belief system in the light of reality. That's what it takes, and that's going to be the answer to it. Now, there may be other things here that we, we need to consider. Um, sometimes in our lives, we need to make journeys, whether they're of the literal kind, you know, we get on a boat, plane, train, or bus, and there's something about a journey here being significant? Is it who you sit next to on the bus? Is it what happens on the journey itself? Or is it what happens when you get to your destination? There is something about an experience about the end of a journey here that it plays into something that's really, really important in your life. I think too, if you are seeking purpose in your life, and that doesn't sometimes you know, we can go for a long time thinking, I'm sure I meant to do something, but I don't know what it is. This full moon, angled by this Mars-Pluto opposition, could be the very thing to reveal to you what your purpose is. And in general, when we find meaning and purpose in life, it means that we are conscious that we have done something that benefits other people that we realize through our own knowledge or our own actions, our own skills, we've actually helped other people. That gives us a great sense of being here for a reason. So don't necessarily look for large things. Don't necessarily expect to be have a Damascus moment, you know. But in the action of doing something, you may realize this is what I should be doing. This is giving me that sense of great purpose. Health, I think too, I've mentioned health that I think is important at this time. And, you know, we all have different feelings, don't we? Some of us think medicine has all the answers and some of us think medicine has no answers. Well, I want to look at alternative methods. So whatever is your philosophy, maybe it's time to look at the other side. Okay. So, Sun, Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising. This full moon is cutting across the axis of gestation. This means something has been, uh, ha has, has been percolating. There has been a gestation period. Something has been developing. And it's this full moon that says this is it. This is what is, is being offered. This is what's coming in to the world. There is a sense of completion and a sense of closure. Now, aside from the idea of babies and pregnancies, that's very literal, isn't it? We're bringing a baby into the world. There's been a gestation period of nine months, or maybe in some cases not nine months, but here it is, ready to be delivered. And that's a wonderful thing. But of course, we can work on a project, whether it's a an uh, enterprise, a business enterprise, or whether it's something a little bit more creative. And it's ready, it's done. And that can be a great sense of accomplishment, or it can be a sense of 
it, it, you know, that there's there was more you wanted to put into it or there was something that you wish was different about it. But what's done is done. And we really get that feeling from this particular alignment here. What's done is done. And I think you might even find yourself saying that. And if you do, there you go. That's that's the purpose of this particular setup. This full moon and the Mars Pluto opposition is taking place in what I call the survival houses of the horoscope. The four survival houses, second house, fifth house, eighth house, and 11th house. So that means that something central to our survival is woven in to this story of the full moon and the Mars-Pluto opposition. Is it the realization of something that you need and you didn't realize you needed it because that's what's central to your survival? Or is it that you've got a set of circumstances that you're dealing with that need to be attended to and achieved in order to survive? It could be either of those ways of looking at it. But I think it is important to almost say that to yourself, you know, what is central to my survival? And it, it'll be different to different Sagittarius. It's not going to be, a, you know, an identical experience. But whatever it is that really needs examining, and it may give you a lot of answers, you know, really and truly, if we can answer that, then we sort of know where we are. There may be a relationship in here as well, because the full moon is on the axis of romance and love affairs and collaborations. And I think if we go back to the new moon in Aries, which was, in fact, a total solar eclipse, it happened in April. If you go back to the April period and you think about the things that happened then, did you meet this person or had you known this person for a while, but things took off? in the April period? Was there something about April that marked a really significant turning point? Six months on, you're going to be looking at that and seeing the results of it. Has or is it more than you had hoped for and you are ready to go forward with this? Or are you discovering now the drawbacks, the things that aren't working, the things that will never be healed, the things that will never be done? Again, it's going to be different from Sagittarian to Sagittarian, but it could be that something has run its course. And if something really is done and dusted, then there is no further to go with it. Painful as it may be, that's the realization you have to come to. Nobody finds a Mars-Pluto opposition easy. Even if it's used in the physical sense that you've got an arduous task, you need to push your body or your mind to its very limits to achieve the objective, which is a great thing. I mean, we've all done that from at certain points in our life, wanted something so badly, been in a situation where we want to achieve it. And this on a Mars-Pluto opposition, it's like every last drop of your energy, ability, Everything is poured into that. And what a result you'll get. But is it easy? No, it isn't. It's very, very demanding. So it doesn't have to be a bad experience, the one that's linked to this full moon. It can be a great achievement, but it's it's cost you. You've, you've had to put a lot into it. But for other Sagittarians, it's more about what's going on at this particular period that you have to say, you know, is this central to my survival? If it isn't, then, you know, it's not worth it. If it is, then you've got your answer, haven't you? Capricorn. Sun Capricorn, Capricorn rising. And obviously, if you know the degree of your ascending Capricorn sign, then you'll be able to place this extraordinary grand cross in its correct houses. But as we're looking at this, we're looking at the angular houses of the horoscope. And these are always the dynamic houses. We definitely have things going on that are real and front forward. They're not in the imagination. They're not somewhere way off center. They're actually in the center of everything. 
And I think especially if you are a late Capricorn, that means anything from about the 13th of January to the 19th, 20th of January, then you're really going to pick up this grand cross. And it means you are at a crossroads. I mean, look at it. Sun opposition, moon, Pluto opposition, Mars, there you are in the center of it. You obviously can't go backwards. Although what you can do is look at history. You can sink back. That's something you can do. But basically, it's do I go right, do I go left, or do I go straight on? You're at a crossroads. You could be at a crossroads in a relationship. You could be at a crossroads with your career. You could be at a crossroads with a situation relating to an offspring. You can be at a crossroads in terms of your health. I mean, there, there are just so many ways you can be at a crossroads, but thinking of it in this way and thinking about the choices that you have, that does give you options, doesn't it? When, when we look at something, we rise above it and we see all the different options we have, then we're empowered. It's when we immediate, our immediate response to a situation that has suddenly been presented to us is, oh, I don't know what to do with this, so I can't do anything about this. And that would be wrong thinking in this case. What you need to do is rise above that situation, consider all the options that there are. But I think also what needs to come into this are your feelings. You know, sometimes we make a decision and it's not what we feel. It's we did it with our head. We thought, you know what? This is going to be the best for everyone. This is going to give me the best results. So I'm going to do that. And yet it still doesn't work. Why didn't it work? Because it doesn't have your heart in it. Now, if you have a situation where you're trying to make the best decision, knowing what your heart feels about it is going to give you the answer. And I think this full moon and everything else going on right now, you have to get into your heart. When your heart says to you, this is what I want to do. This is what I believe I should do. Go with it. Don't question it because you've engaged your heart. Um, and so often we don't do that because we think it's going to um, compromise a good decision. But on this occasion and where we are in life, yeah, <laughs> it's got to involve the heart. That will make things simple. Now, it may be that you do feel a bit under attack, whether someone is bullying you or someone is insisting on their way and their way only. And somehow you're trying to, you know, fit in with that, but at the same time feeling it's deeply wrong. Well, you, you can't allow someone to do that. If there is no way out and, you know, that person's opinion and that person's actions are the only way, then of course you're gonna to have to find some way to live with it. But really and truly, I think it comes back to where's your heart? And if it's about a relationship, you know, have you come to the point where, why am I in this relationship? Why am I in this business? Why am I in this, with this company? What am I doing here? Then it's right to go. That full moon has brought things to a crisis point. And of course it is on the axis of career on the one hand, life goals, things to do with your material world. And on the other hand, things to do with your home, with your family, and more importantly, that sanctuary that we feel about when we're safe and we're home in ourselves. So that's sort of under threat, if you like, or it's the issue on the table. So it could be the end of a job, the end you're retiring. It could be that you've got to move because <laughs> the removal vans are outside the door. It could be that there's a family crisis and somehow decisions have to be made. These are sort of general themes that might be right. But we've also got Pluto at the very, very end of your sign, Mars in the opposite point, and it sort of says there's something been going on for years. This isn't something that went on last April, for instance, even though April might play into it because that was when there was the solar eclipse in Aries. This is something that's 
a very long pattern, a long period of time. And really and truly, it's on its way out now because this is not a situation you can carry on with because going forward, everything is going to be different. So I know it's easy for me to say not to be sad about a relationship ending. Of course, you're sad or something ending. Of course, it's it's hard. But if you can see it in the way that it's the right time for something to go, right time for something to end, because the next chapter coming through is going to be very different. And all of this is going to involve some soul searching, Capricorn. I'm afraid it, it can't be done without soul searching. Okay. Aquarius. Aquarius, the sun is in the ninth house, the moon is in the third house, we've got Mars in the sixth house, Pluto in the twelfth house. So we've got all these houses that have to do with seeking, seeking answers, seeking validation, seeking purpose, seeking our spiritual salvation, if you like, spiritual meaning, the meaning of life, the meaning of what we're doing the meaning for what's going on. That's the nature of the way this, this spread with the sun in the ninth house, the moon in the third, Pluto in the twelfth, Mars in the sixth. It can be a little bit of a crisis of faith here. Whether it's a crisis of faith with a job, but it's a crisis of faith with uh, an occupation that you are involved with. It could be a project, an endeavor, a way you've been dealing with something. It could be a crisis, a, a spiritual crisis about your faith. And it could also be something to do with far horizons, whether you've been, what, what's going on at the moment has a lot to do with how you thought your life would be further down the line. Perhaps when you do retire or where you truly want to be, but it's not now, it's in the future. So what's going on right now is going to change that in some degree. But it can also have something to do with far horizons. So it's people in distant places. It's international companies. It's international events that might be playing into things at this particular point in time. Always when we've got a full moon, we are aware of polarities. Uh, that's what we're made to be aware of, divisions. And there is the option to try to unite those divisions or to simply accept that there are going to be differences. And, you know, earlier on, I talked about um, the American election and it's very divisive and there are major differences. And... Sometimes you can't bridge those differences. Sometimes you can't make them work together. They are separate. They are different. And we're going to see that around this time. We're going to see that polarity. And in your own life, this idea of what ideas unite you with another person, what belief systems you have that unite you with others or alienate you from other people, so it's a time of absolute honesty, Aquarius. Um, do you need to change your opinions? Do you need to look at your value system, your spiritual beliefs? And do they need, in the light of reality, to be changed? Only you can answer that question. What you may answer is, no, they can't. Everything is still valid as I see it. But if there is a slight sense I could be wrong here, or that isn't working, or this needs to change, then change it must. And that's what that full moon opposing the Mars-Pluto opposition is all about. It may demand a lot of you, either physically or mentally or emotionally. This is not going to pass easily. Uh, that's the purpose always, wherever we have Pluto in the mix, and especially with Mars and Pluto, there's a struggle. And sometimes it's a struggle with our conscience. Sometimes it's a struggle over money. Sometimes it's a struggle about a relationship. It can be all sorts of different things, but you need to be aware of the struggle. 
and that the you, you're going to need a lot of resources in order to uh, dissolve or to come to a happy ending or to get through to the other side of something. These are all ways of looking at what this particular setup is all about. But what I think it's doing in many ways, this is what I think of the purpose here. I think that Aquarius as a, as a sign, uh, you are someone who thinks beyond the presenting circumstances. You're often looking for reasons and what goes on in different parts of the world or beyond what we can see. And often you can be very spiritual and you can sort of look at things in a way that uh, is more philosophical, more spiritually aware. And this may be a test of all of that. And if you think of it as a test, then it becomes something that you can handle in a way you're doing it fully conscious as opposed to it being confusing. You know what it is. There's also a sense here, and I think all of us want to know what our life purpose is. And you could well discover what your life purpose is at this time. And it's probably going to come through a series of events or one big event that's going to show you very clearly why you're here and what you need to do while you're here. So these are rather big topics, aren't they? They're very, very big. But hopefully my talking to you about all this will really help you through this period, which could be pivotal. pivotal. It could uh, sort of really change your life. Okay, Aquarius. Pisces, this particular full moon is flanking the second eighth axis, which is the financial axis of the horoscope, although more really, it is the axis of self-worth. It has to do with your offerings on the one hand, what you give, and it has other people's offerings on the other, what you receive. So this is the axis of giving and receiving every bit as much as it is about uh, money, about possessions, about settlements, about uh, inheritances, about salaries, about investments, about all those things. Now, I've said this to everybody who's, uh, you know, who, whose sign makes this particular configuration fall in the survival houses. And it is a common theme of the second, the eighth, the 11th and the fifth. It's about survival. That's what this full moon is about. Now, you might think as I'm talking to you, what's she on about? You know, everything is fine. You know, I've got a roof over my head. I earn a good salary. My, I'm very happy in my relationship. And, you know, what could possibly affect my survival? But it's only when something happens and the answer that we need to find is what is central to our survival? Is it a person? Is it a thing? Is it a way? What is it? The answer you give is relevant to this astronomical and astrological setup. What is central to your survival? Now, of course, we can talk about money, and maybe for a lot of Pisces, this is a bit of a financial crisis time. Maybe you're coming out of a relationship, and uh, there's all sorts of concerns about who gets what. That could be one scenario. Another scenario could be um, that somebody owes you money, and they're not giving it to you, whether that's a company or whether it's an individual. On the other hand, it could be that outgoings have way exceeded incomings. And so now you're just struggling to pay the bills and you're at a point where you can't do that anymore. And the interesting thing is that you heard me say a little while ago that the second house is where you give and the eighth house is where you receive, but it's also the house of receivership. So this may apply to a handful 
of Pisceans, that the only way forward really now, because it's unsustainable, the level of debt or the situation you've got in hand, you're going to have to go into receivership. But of course, that in itself is a relief. Something's come to crisis point, you've met it, and now look, it's all over. You don't have to worry about that anymore. But it can also be in a relationship. I mean, it's often easier to give people love, isn't it? It's, it's often easier because it gives us a little bit more power. But when we want other people to give us love, to show us feelings, to be intimate with us, it's very difficult to get someone to do that, just like it is to get someone to change. So this could be a different sort of crisis, a kind of crisis where you feel you're not receiving what you need to survive in a relationship. Remember that word survival is central to the understanding of this configuration. It's the easiest way to unlock the puzzle. We unlock the puzzle by what is central to your survival. This is about that. And when you think about it, there are going to be people throughout the world right now, as we see it on our screens daily, people are having to survive in terrible circumstances right now. And that question, what is central to your survival, is immediately obvious. For some of you out there, it's much more philosophical. Um, it's more about relationships and emotional stuff, but it's still about what's central to your survival. We've also got to remember that the Mars-Pluto position is a tough one because it means we have to dig deep. This is not a superficial answer to a superficial question. The circumstances that are happening to you at the moment aren't superficial. They go deep, they may have a history, or they may be causing you to have to dig into your past in order to find the answers or the wherewithal to deal with your present situation. Everybody throughout the zodiac is at some crisis point at this time as we can see so clearly in the pictures of the horoscope that I've presented to you. And I think if we remember that, it shows that we have compassion. And our compassion for others and our compassion for ourselves, that's really going to be important in here as well. And, you know, sometimes we don't need physical strength. We need mental strength and we need emotional strength. And finding that is also going to be a very important part of the journey you'll be making on this kind of setup. And out the other side of it, everything's going to be different. There are going to be different things available to you. And what you will have learned negotiating this passage are things that will come in in the future for you. There is no need really to be despondent or to look at what all of this is negatively because what it's offering everybody, not just you Pisces, it's offering a great deal to really in a way make us match fit for what's to come, okay? And so to my conclusion, I think I said a little earlier, I have spoken about Mars, Mars in Cancer, and more recently, the previous uh, uh, solar eclipse video, I talked about embracing Mars, the Mars principle. And I think it's really important that we take this into consideration in a different way now, because we've seen the powerful position of Mars in its opposition to Pluto. And as it goes forward into November, it's going to enter Leo. And of course, then Pluto is going to enter Aquarius. So we've got this prevailing Mars-Pluto opposition on and off for many, many months now, and then sort of different signs, next door neighbor signs. But it amounts to the same thing. We're dealing with two principles, Mars on the one hand, Pluto in the other. So it's about transformation. Um, it's also about, and I've mentioned this in each of the 12 signs I've just done, it's about finding resources. Now, that might be quite literal. We might actually be looking for resources, <laughs> digging into the earth to find 
oil, you know, it can be that kind of digging for resources. But in terms of us as individuals, as, you know, people, then we're digging deep to find answers to our present predicaments. And what Mars and Pluto do together is force us to look at the darkness. Now, nobody likes darkness. Um, often the darkness is um, associated with a period of time where, you know, we can't, you know, we're cut off from uh, the light. We're cut off from what's going on in the light. And there is, it's dark. And in fact, I remember somebody I knew very well who had a terrible experience in his life and, you know, went, found a, a, a place for himself and covered all the windows and all the walls with black paint. And he stayed there for six months. Um, and it was as though he needed to go to ground. And what he did in that time was to face his darkness. It was the dark night of the soul. But of course, coming up through the other side of that, he realized how beautiful life was and how necessary the light is. But sometimes we have to experience the darkness before we find the light. And I know these sound like terrible cliches, but the reason they're cliches is because they're true. So humanity is going through a lot of darkness at the moment, but the purpose of that darkness is going to be ultimately to bring us into the light. And we need to think about that every time we see a terrible disaster, every time we see all sorts of terrible things happening. We need to remember this is our journey in the darkness before we see the light. So again, this Mars-Pluto opposition is about our personal darkness. Now, if you ask somebody, you know, well, where is your darkness? <laughs> they probably look baffled, you know, where is, where does my darkness lie? The really easy answer to find your darkness is to find your fears. Because where your fears are, are the reason you act out or things happen in a way that is either self-destructive or destructive to other people. Because often what we fear most causes us to act in a way as I've just said, destructive. So that's what we need to look at. And maybe for a lot of people, what we fear most is our mortality. You know, at some point we won't be here. And that thought about what will it be like not to be here? What will it be like to die? That's a really fearful thought. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people out there who think differently about death and their mortality, embrace it, see it as uh, a liberation, and have no fear whatsoever. But th they're probably in the minority. Most people do fear the unknown, and the big, deep unknown is one's mortality, one's death. So there's a way of confronting this in a way is individual from person to person, but it may be just practical in that, you know, you need to arrange your funeral or you need to do something in order to, you know, set things right with people. Those are good responses to the idea of looking at one's mortality. But if one is sensing that one's life is short, and there is a reason for that, something you're not acknowledging, maybe this is in relation to health, then that needs to be confronted. You need to stand up and say, I'm going to check this out. But there's other things really, isn't it? When I come back to thinking about what we most fear, sometimes we, because of what we're fearing, we can actually damage and sabotage perfectly good relationships because we're assuming that that's what we're facing, that a fear, a natural fear we have about being abandoned or a fear about uh, other things in a relationship, being controlled perhaps, and we bring it about because it is our fear. So I don't want to spend another 100 hours talking about this, but I do want to say let's make this particular configuration because the full moon's participation 
in this configuration makes it more accessible because the moon, the sun brings Pluto much more into our radius. We need to face our fears. And if we can do that, then I think this is its most useful expression. But also what I'm saying to you is that if, if a situation arises and it makes you deeply fearful, rise above that fear. Sometimes when the worst happens, we realize it wasn't the worst and it's a liberation. So there are a lot of things to think about in connection with everything I've been talking about on this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope uh, you've taken away a lot from it. And of course, I look forward to speaking to you on my next video in a couple of weeks. Bye for now.